G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now this is an instructional video for those people that have bought the um, dead bug, dead eye rigging tool which allows you to do the channels. Here's the channels here. Easily do the channels and space them out. And my rat harp which has proved very popular. And I'm going to show in this video how to do the upper rat lines, right, for the upper part of the mast, which I have never shown before on video. So this will be a resource tool for anyone who has bought either of these two tools that I designed and it'll show you in detail how to use them. They're so easy to use. Okay, does that sound interesting? I hope so. Roll the music. Now a lot of you have been following me both in um, YouTube posts, not the videos but actually the photograph posts, and on Facebook and, and the Patreons and YouTube members how I've actually developed this thing. It used to be a fairly simple sort of tool that I'd actually drilled out of a piece of 2mm thick scratch card. And that is what I'd use to do the um, forward um, dead eyes, get them spaced right. But I decided I could go further because I've got the 3D tool. So I actually designed this. And this is a, a multi-tool in that it can do four and a half, fours, threes and three and a halfs with all the spacings I need for this particular kit. So this is literally all the spacings you need to do a St. Louis or probably any similar size ship of the period that uses that rage dead eyes because the ratios are pretty consistent always. So you could probably use this. But I will make different versions for different ships. But anyhow, still developing this. There's a few little bugs in it and a couple of errors that I need to fix, but I'll show you. It allows me to put two dead eyes in and space them perfectly. Now you've seen me do this before, but I thought I'd show you basically that it does work again in this tool. You haven't seen it before. So what you do is you get your dead eye and this has already been set up so that you can uh, put them in at the exact size and they're friction fit. So you need to line it up so that you've got a pointy bit to the outside and you pop it in. So there we go. Okay. Easy as that. So you always have the triangle at the top here and then the base there towards the middle. That's how you do your channels. So again, we do the other one. Straighten that one up a bit. Click. That's better. Okay, once they're in there, they're, they're not going to fall out. That's the whole idea of friction fitting it. I've been developing this thing for a while now, so it's been quite a few months of trial and error. And now transferring that all to the CAD program and then um, printing out a few until I got one that I really liked. And I'm still developing it, but I'll have this finished soon and then it will be available for sale in my store. Now, what we need is some cordage to go through there. Okay, now I just drilled out the holes there to make sure that you've got um, nothing obstructing. What you're trying to do. So I've worked this out that at least for this one I need 20 centimeters. That's what I use. And that needs to be waxed because um, you don't want furries down the track. You don't want to come back and find the dust bunnies all over your thing. So they're waxed. Okay. There we go. And another trick that we use to make this really easy is I have, I've used this before, these are beading needles, okay? And they're really easy to use. They make your rigging so much easier. You pop the thread through, okay? And then when you pull it back, that's it. And it's not knotted, it's just sitting there loose. But what we can do is this now takes away all the the eye straining sort of problems of trying to get through those holes. So you just shove this big long needle through and look at that. All right, so away you go. First one, I'll now, and then to take it off, you just slide it down to the middle and it comes out. So I'm going to just knot this up like I've done before. Once we've got that knot, you're not going to pull too hard because otherwise you'll rip your dead eye out. Remember, it's only friction fit. So that's secured in there. Doesn't need glue or anything, not with this method. And we bring back in our beading needle. 
slide down the end okay now ring it is everything's held in place you're not fumbling around on the model I mean this is too small to work on the model it's the whole reason I'm doing this purists get all upset and say you should do it on the model well in 1 to 144 scale it's too tiny so you match the channel bottom dot to bottom dot right and you come across you go to top 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 okay one of the apex triangle pull that through it's just sewing really top dot to top dot because remember one side you're going to get seen that's going to be the good side the side where all the knots are and where it basically sits at diagonals which is quite correct that's how they were done that's on the back side through there pull that through and finally we go into the last hole there gently pull it through flip it over there we go so what we're going to do now is tie that off I literally tied that to where the first string came in remember and on this side you see they are both the same spacing they both have the lines all correctly set up and then it's just a matter of you want to remove them not a problem at all you pop out one slide the string across pop out the other one there it is easy as that all right so how do we actually rig up this rat up it's very easy first you use the hole sort of down the bottom which basically just lets you have an anchor point you tie off your cordage next I've already been on the model and I've checked where they need to start and that is basically the top of the um, the, the red dead eyes and I need to be one rung above that it's actually the binding that's on top of the dead eyes so that's the point I need to be so I simply bring this around and find one above and one above okay so from there is my pencil line and one above there's my pencil line probably could even go another one no that's too much we'll just go there okay once I've got that spot which I know is level don't be too worried about this because you can angle it once it's in there then it's just a matter of following the grooves and just winding it on keep it tight and keep holding it because if it comes unraveled it's a bit of a bugger you'll have to pull it all off and start again and of course this bit is speeded up because there's no way physically possible my hands can move that fast I am not a spider I don't know how to spin webs at Rick so really it, it does go on pretty quickly so I mean I've just speeded this bit up so you didn't fall asleep in the middle of my video okay here we go we're coming to the end here we go if you've managed to do it right they're all level and they all match up and all you're ready to do is tie off in the little hole there leave yourself plenty of string to tie off now you keep your tension last thing you want is this thing getting loose and unraveling and this is where that little hole comes in very handy although I think I'll make them slightly bigger in my next iteration of this so that allows you to then push it through tie it off keep the tension so the whole thing won't fall to bits so here we go here's a video of me tying a knot I know it's riveting stuff isn't it absolutely riveting stuff you can see how fumbly my fingers are but it's important to really give this a good knot and tie it off hard there we go done now comes the magic bit this is so easy this thing which is all rigged up sneaks in behind here like so right and now all the white rat lines or light cream they're pushed up hard against the shrouds the black shrouds all right easy as that so you just need to make sure that it's all within this center of this thing which it is everything's lined up correctly yep nothing's pushed out of shape all right now how do I attach them well that's the easiest part because this thing has got a little little rods here that spring the string out right the cotton thread out that's the whole reason that it's pushed up hard and in fact even the um, 
shards are slightly distorted, distorted out this way, but that's okay. They'll be fine. They've still got their correct aspect and shape. That's not a problem. Double check on that. Yep. That one there is just annoying it. There we go. That's it. That's a bit better. Okay, so all we have to do now is some PVA white wood glue and a toothpick and our job will be done very quickly. this to dry for an hour or so and you notice all those big blobs that I put on they just disappear you don't see anything but there are tiny little bits of glue joining the rat lines to the shrouds so will it all stick together who knows here we go so what we'll do is we'll trim this away very carefully everything cut and this should just lift right out there's always a couple that still need a bit of trimming and there's always a little bit of tidying up to do That is sitting there all by itself, see? Now when you're doing the uh, upper mast rat lines, procedure normally is the same. You'd uh, basically, you know, put your uh, shrouds in and, and then basically put your rat harp in, check for the height that it needs to be, take it out, rig it up, pop it in, you're away. But be careful. If your rat harp isn't going to fit there, you'd better not put your shrouds in and glue them down. These ones are only in dry fit. So that's the thing, I've, I've put them in dry fit to see if the harp would fit. And if my harp is not going to fit, I'm going to go, oh dear, because I've got a big wide fighting platform or there's just some obstruction in the way or it, it just doesn't fit the angle, then you're going to have to build this whole assembly off the model, but you can still use your rat harp. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, so this won't fit in there, right? You, you've tried it, you've tried to get it in, it's just it's just not fitting, and you realise this is hopeless, it's not going to work. Hopefully you haven't glued in those dead eyes, right? And those shrouds. Mine are just dry fit. First thing you want to do is measure off the triangle before we go any further, because we're going to do this off the model. So measuring from the bottom of the fighting platform to the top of the one below, that's 8.5 millimetres. Probably be the same on this side. Yep, because these are usually kind of symmetric, all the ones on the top here. And they're not far off it. And the width of your dead eyes here. So I've got about 1.6 centimetres. So okay, 8.5, 1.6. Now, remember that 8.5 centimetres? Yeah, not millimetres, Harry, you drunk. I don't know, sometimes. Now get a rubber band. And if you've measured that off there on the harp, that is where you need to put it. Now you measure right from the end. That is important. Everything will come out in the wash at the end. Push in your little dead eye. Right? It just sort of pops in there in between the bands in the rubber band. You need a rubber band that goes a rubber band. You need a rubber band that goes around twice. Right? So again, taking your dead eye, making sure it's up the right way, pop it in between the two little strands there of the rubber band, and it'll hold in place. And then all you've got to do is tie them off to the end. So just working gently. Don't rush it. Don't rush it at all. Take your time, because you've only got a few to do. These are just, you know, the small rat lines that go on the, the top of the ship. So popping it through, tying it off. It's important to sort of, you know, get rid. Only do a half hitch, because if you've made a mistake, you may want to take it out again later. That's it. Easy as that. Now at this point, just check that your shrouds aren't overlapping each other, getting twisted. Space them out so they're nice and even. 
And there you go. I've tied them all off up here. Now, I won't lie to you. This is fiddly. This is annoyingly fiddly. But if you're gentle and you don't pull too hard, I found that was the thing, the rubber band is giving you some tension. Nothing this here needs to be super tight. This is the thing. Just get them to lay on top. The, um, the rat heart will do all the work in bridging them up as long as they are reasonably sort of laying there. Okay, they do not have to be super tight. It's not like when you tie them up on a mast. Now, one problem with doing it this way is the um, dead eyes tend to twist and turn. So I found a simple solution for that. I tried a few things. This was the easiest. I cut the end of a Q-tip or a cotton bud and I shoved it through and then they all sit nicely the way you want. You can even sort of adjust them a little bit. And you can also then also slide up and down until you get that width. Remember, you've got to get that width that's going to match your model. So you should have the correct height, the correct width. They're all lined up and tent. What you want to do now is get out your uh, toothpick, a bit of white wood glue, ch -ch 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 -ch, all the way on. Glue it up just like you normally do and then trim the whole thing off and bingo bongo, that should fit on the model. That's a simple, if not elegant, solution when you can't fit the rat heart on the model. It works. Well, I hope this video has been helpful for those that want to use the new dead bug. <laughs> it's a funny name. My patrons came up with that name. And the rat harp. So, um, two tips and tricks there. One thing always with the rat harp, always actually start at the top and thread down to where that you need it to be that seems to work better and then with your excess because you you know you might have a bit of excess and maybe you don't have a finishing off hole to tie it to just wind it around the um the leg as i've done there that is not even knotted off that's just wound around there and it'd be tight enough to actually use and glue into place so there's that so um another little thing with the um three and a half millimeter holes on the dead heart okay now they will work with three and a half millimeter dead eyes right but I found my um, Latina, uh, art, you know, Arti Santa Latina, whatever they call themselves, uh, dead eyes. They weren't going in. I thought, what's going on here? And I put my verniers over those uh, dead eyes to see what size they really were. They're 3.6s. So just double check. If they're not fitting in, just double check that um, the dead eyes that you've been given actually will fit. Now, it was an easy workaround to actually fix that. I just basically pulled out a round file. And got in there and just round file that little bit because you're only looking at point 0.1 of a millimeter. So I round filed those out just gently until my dead eyes fit. So then I made that basically a 3.6. But that was what I have and what I'm going to be using for this project. So really that tool will work perfectly from then on. So that's just a little tip. All right. Well, this has all been chaptered. So you can easily come back to this and jump to any section if you need to relook at how I use these tools. There are also longer versions on the full videos for both the St. Louis and my bounty where I've shown in detail how I use the tools. So you can use those. There will be links to those at the end of this video as well. So I hope that's enough resource. You can always contact me by email, through the website or Facebook if you're having any problems or suggestions. And, you know, just let me know if you're really, if the rat heart's working for you. I'd love to hear some positive feedback. But then again, I don't mind some criticism and I will learn from it. This is an evolving tool and we will learn together. It works fine on my workbench, on my model, you know, but sometimes it might not work exactly as expected at your end. That's okay. We can modify it. I can send you a replacement. I'll look after you. Don't worry. All right. Well, that's enough shameless promotion. <laughs> there's buttons down here. There's buttons. There's still buttons on every single video. Yeah, hit buttons if you if you can. Hit the buttons. And if you really want to help me out and you appreciate all the work that I'm doing, bang, buy me a curry. That'd be really good. Be really helpful. So that's it for this video. As I said, it's just an instructional video, really, for those that have either bought or are interested in buying my tools. And I'll keep producing it. I'll probably come up with more. I'll probably come up with all kinds of things for doing ships. I've got one planned, which is for dead eyes, which is more for the larger scale wooden ships, where you don't actually need the bug. You can actually do it on the model. Yeah. That way you can tension. You can run your shrouds up through, do them in pairs, and tension them off. But you can get all your spacing down the model. More of that another day. Lots more to come. All right. Goodbye from Australia. And it's Kuru from Harry Hedin. <laughs>